there comes a point when you've done a lot of iCloud testing that you start getting really weird error messages and weird behavior in your apps. No matter how hard you try, no matter if you do things right every time, sometimes iCloud just freaks out. And there's a fairly easy way to start your app with a clean slate to make sure, hey, disregard anything that I may have ever done on this bundle ID and start with something as if I've never touched this thing. You can do this programmatically, but a much easier way to deal with this is on the device itself, and I'll show you quickly how to do that. On the bottom here, merge content here, that's, that worked all fairly well, but some of the downloads just haven't quite happened um, here. The file download timed out, uh, and I've got that a few times here. And this just means iCloud was trying to synchronize something that the device thought was in iCloud, but another device went ahead and deleted it already. So there's an inconsistency there. And you know, these things can happen, uh, especially during testing where we do so many things and sometimes things just go wrong. And uh, here's what you can do to remedy that. On your device, head over to Settings. And once in Settings, find the iCloud tab. Here it is. There it is, tap on it. This is iOS 8 already, so it looks a little bit different than iOS 7, but the principle is still the same. You find the Storage tab here, and somewhere you find Manage Storage. I think Manage Storage in iOS 7 is on the previous page here, but you will find it. Here you have all your iCloud backups. We're not particularly interested in those right now. We want to have a look at Documents and Data. And the most recent or the largest apps show up in here. Uh, tap Show All to see all of them that are available on your iCloud account. And apart from bigger ones and major ones, you find these things here. So uh, in my case, this is the end of the bundle ID that I've, that I've given my app. So this is kind of the title of my app. And uh, it tells me that currently there's 24.5 kilobytes stored in iCloud. So if you tap on that, you see documents and data, 24.5 kilobytes, or you know something substantially larger. If you've chosen to save any core data related logs or any documents and data in the, in the iCloud documents directory, then the individual documents will come up here and you can delete them individually. For example, let me just show you this. If I go back here and we'll go to Keynote, for example, then you'll see that each single keynote presentation that I've made is saved here as a single document. And at the same time, it also may have data that is uh, not exposed. So stuff that is not, not exposed won't show up here. It's just bundled up in one thing. So the difference is if you save something in the documents directory in iCloud, then each file is exposed, whereas when you don't, then it's not. So for example, if you uh, go to iPhoto, iPhoto doesn't expose that, it just, it just saves everything in one uh, transparent database. And this is what I've done in my test app here, it's called iCloud, and here it is. Now to get rid of everything, you hit the edit button and just say delete all. And if you do that, it'll prompt you, are you really sure you want to do that? Go for it. And this container will now completely disappear from iCloud. So if you now go back and say show all, my app is now completely gone from this list. And this is the equivalent of deleting everything from the iCloud service from any device. So if you go to another device now and you would go to the same menu, uh, your app should also be gone. And now you can start with a clean slate. It is sometimes helpful to do that, especially during testing. One thing that's really important to remember is that now what you do not want to do is go back to your dashboard and launch your app again. Very important. You can even do it the other way around. Delete this app because this app assumes something is now in iCloud. So by launching it, it is trying to communicate with that container. The container is empty, doesn't even exist. And the app is just going to freak out. It may not crash, but it certainly isn't going to behave and it certainly isn't going to sync with anything. So if you have your app installed on several devices, make sure you delete all of these versions from all devices and then redeploy the app from Xcode. Therefore, the first app 
that is launched that's trying to communicate with iCloud will see, hey, there's no container, no other app has been here. I need to now write my baseline zip file and start building that container. If you do that any other way, more things go wrong and there's more inconsistencies that can happen. So before you do anything, do not click that button. Instead, hold it down and delete that. Make sure you do that with every other app that you have on all your devices and then redeploy from Xcode. Thank you.